And now I teach all these rock and rollers to meditate. And evidently, the music business that they're in is, there's a lot of stress. And meditation just works wonders with them. I've done a lot of the current uh, rock and rollers, Mason Jennings and uh, Matt Skeeble. They're very well known in that world. I don't know anything about their music, but Rick Rubin, who's very well known in that world, sends, every, sends them all to me. I started out with Madonna, and then, I, I, I was, and then she's gone on to Kabbalah, but, and Lenny Kravitz in the early days, and then like Sheryl Crow came. And once they start meditating, they start singing about home and love and harmony and spirituality. And this is gonna help a lot of young people think in a lot more peaceful way than the dreadful lyrics that we've been hearing over the last few years. Maslow always in his hierarchy of needs, music was right up there at the top. Music and art and spirituality were the very tops. And when I hear about them canceling music programs in schools, I think <laughs> they just don't know what they're doing. I think, I think that peace is such a big help toward a person feeling happy and joyful and if it's the right kind of music. Well, I met Maharishi seven years before I met the Beatles. And there had been a rumor that maybe the Beatles would be coming, but nobody knew anything. And I would say that most of the people who came there, there were 52 of us, and we were hoping to become teachers of TM, and, and not, I think about 20 of us became teachers. But one day, Maharishi called me in and he said, the Beatles are going to be arriving in a few days, but we're not saying anything about it yet but I want you to go fix up their rooms. <laughs> Our rooms were just so awful. They put me in charge of the peons to make their rooms <laughs> nicer. And you know, I, I would have them paint this, they dropped so much paint on the floor, then they'd have to paint the floor. <laughs> and, 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 and anyway, we, the Beatles never realized what had been done when they walked into their rooms. They had mattresses on their beds. We had curtains put up. We had mirrors. We, had, we even had fixtures, toilet fi fi uh, fixtures that worked. <laughs> and, and, and I always felt, Maharishi had asked me a few days before, what do you feel you need to learn here, Nancy? And I said, patience and humility. And I think that's when he decided that he would give me these poor people with very little brain power to work with. When they did arrive, uh, he, he called them, he called me to come to his house and he introduced me to them. It was just, uh, let me see, it, it was, it was uh, George Harrison and John Lennon were the first to arrive, then Paul, Oh, McCartney arrived a little later with Jane Asher. But he introduced them to me and said, when, if you want anything, get a hold of Nancy. Nancy will be my ears and eyes for all of you to, in case you need anything, you let, let me know through her. So I, I took them to Rishikesh one day and we went shopping, which was so amusing because all the stores are really shacks on their side. And, and I tell them, you have to bargain a little bit. They didn't want to bargain. And they bought the most atrocious looking things. Like I have one, I have John Lennon's coat here. I'll show it to you afterwards. It's, it's gold colored, I don't know, velvet with big red dots all over it. And it was really amusing because they bought all these things and then took them back to the little, what we laughingly call couturier who sat on a dirt floor under a tent and had a little hand-driven uh, 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 sewing machine. And he turned out these fashions that in the long run had more impact on the world than Balenciaga or Dior or any of them. All the, the, the short jackets and the long shirts underneath and uh, the, the, the churidars, the, the Indian type pants and 
all those things came out of the ashram. Before the Beatles left the ashram, they were talking about building this wonderful uh, system where they could uh, broadcast all around the world from New Delhi all about how peace could be obtained through meditation. Maharishi always felt that if 1% of the world population meditated, there would be no more wars and we would have a peaceful globe. That unless a person experiences inner peace, they're going to be giving out very much harmony. And isn't harmony what we're talking about? And spirituality? You know, it has nothing to do with religion. It just has to do with uh, the vibrations that you give out.